What is up, everybody? Mr. Purtis here. Welcome to unit number two, 600 BCE to 600 CE. Really three parts we're going to deal with in three different videos. So the first video is going to, this one is going to be about belief systems. The second one is going to be about the empires, or classical civilizations, or maybe you call them golden ages back last year. And then the last piece will be on trade routes. All three of these things intertwine with each other. They're all connected with one another. So one thing just to keep in mind is that we're going to talk about belief systems today, but it does connect to the other two, and the other two will connect back to this. So everything's a mishmash. So let's get started here. I'm going to do kind of a quick overview of all of this. Uh, I'm, I can't, we don't have time for this to get into every single specific re religion or belief system. Each one should really be its own video. Nonetheless, um, know that we'll talk more about it in class, but this is just a brief overview, kind of a review. And the first thing is there were belief systems in the previous time period. A lot of those belief systems are going to get strengthened or codified is kind of a fancy word, meaning like the codes are going to get uh, more developed and more advanced, I guess you would say. <clears throat> With this, there is a, all these belief systems provide an ethical code to live by. And all of the belief systems also provide a bond for people. We talked about culture and what unifies people in the last video. This one is about religion and how does religion bring people together. Because we're talking about a time before nationalism, before pride in your country, and really it's religion that kind of unifies people. So a couple different belief systems that have existed in the previous and come forward into this one and get more developed. Number one is Judaism. Connects back to the Hebrew scriptures from the previous time period with Abraham. It has a huge influence for Mesopotamia. This is the founding area of um, the Jewish faith and he the Hebrew scriptures. And over the course of this time period, Jews are going to be persecuted. It's kind of a common theme that we unfortunately see throughout history where um, Jewish people are treated kind of as second-class citizens in many empires. And during this time period we're talking about under the Romans, the Jews are going to be kicked out of their holy lands here in around Jerusalem, um, and they're going to be forced to spread out throughout Europe and over here into North Africa and to parts of uh, what is now kind of modern day Turkey. So also we do have this influence from uh, Mesopotamia. So we see a lot of similarities, for example, between Hammurabi's code and the Ten Commandments, for example. There's a lot of similarities because of where they're from. Number two, we had the Aryan conquerors who overthrew the Indus River Valley civilization who brought in the Vedas and the Vedas are going to be the basis for Hinduism. And kind of one interesting side note to this or maybe just an interesting fact to this is there's a little controversy even within Hinduism and Hindus themselves about whether or not their belief system is monotheistic or polytheistic. On one hand, people say it's monotheistic. There is one God who is the creator of all other gods. So all the gods have derived from this one God. And this is Brahma right here. You will see there's four heads, four faces, and all of this that you see in this image, there's symbolism there that is part of Hinduism and part of the Hindu faith. At the same time, even though that because there are many other gods and each god is so different there is there's these multiple manifestations of brahma some people consider uh, hinduism to be polytheistic because there are many different gods and each god is different from uh, what you would pray to for rain for example to what different regions of india are praying to different gods regionally so each kind of a god of a city or a god of a town in a sense so this is very different depending upon where you are but a couple of beliefs that you should learn last year reincarnation your soul comes back dharma is the idea of practicing um, following the rules and the codes and ethics to live by in hinduism and then karma which is that idea of what goes around comes around uh you lose five dot or you take five dollars off the ground that was someone else's today and then tomorrow you end up losing five dollars someone will be like that's karma um, you trip somebody in the hallway and then you trip later on that's karma and this idea of reincarnation all comes back to the caste system which we'll talk about more with the Mauryan and the Gupta but they're going to utilize Hinduism for to strengthen their social class structure also so we, those are the old belief systems we also have new beliefs that are going to kind of rise up during this period and we really see almost every major religion minus Islam come to the forefront and rise during this period. So another religion that rises or comes to um, popularity is, that was the chair, is Buddhism. And Buddhism is in South Asia, which is also known as India. And it's really gonna be a reaction to Hinduism. And in this case, we're gonna see Buddha, who was a prince growing up and he was tired of the life and, the po and what he saw in the world and the poverty. And so he goes to meditate by a river and he um, was watching the stream and poof he kind of disappears and he becomes one with the universe and which is called nirvana because he had achieved what is called enlightenment kind of realizing what the world is and then he decides to come back again 
When he comes back from his poof existence, he comes back into his human form and he decides to spread the beliefs of what he learned. And he says, what I learned is the Four Noble Truths. And essentially the Four Noble Truths say, all life is suffering. But what makes you suffer is your desires because we want what we can't have. Whether it's material possessions, whether it is dating someone else, whether it is having your parents stop nagging you about stuff, we want what we can't get. And if you can give up those desires and you can just live in the moment, then you will, you can achieve nirvana just like Buddha. And there's also this eightfold path, which is the way to eventually get to getting rid of desire. And it's very similar to the Ten Commandments um, and the major codes and other belief systems. Also, we have this uh, Mauryan Empire, Mauryan and Gupta, the two empires in India. He is, his name is Ashoka. Um, Ashoka is a, he's a emperor. He's going, he's Buddhist, he's not Hindu, and most of this region is Hindu, which is kind of interesting. Always, we'll see that a couple times in uh, South Asian uh, political systems. So he decides that he wants to spread Buddhism. So he sends out missionaries and merchants, and he opens up schools. And we'll talk about the trade routes in video three that he used in order to do this. Also, when religions spread, they change. So you have a couple different image, images here of the different Buddhas. You got the Chinese Buddha, the Japanese Buddha. And you can see the other one. This is probably the most common in the United States of Buddha that you would recognize and that you would identify with uh, because these would you would see these sold in Chinatown or somewhere down in New York City, like the little figurines that you rub the belly and gives you good luck. Also, we have Confucianism. China, um, it's going to be really implemented by the Han Dynasty, this belief, but it's all about social harmony. And the idea in Confucianism is that you respect the person who is above you and they should respect you. So for example, the ruler and subject, the ruler makes laws that is respectful of the subject, but the subject respects that the ruler made those laws. So it's kind of this relationship that one is above the other, but they, they're not supposed to abuse their power in any way. Many people in Confucianism, uh, what is called ancestor veneration, there is no, uh, there's nothing written in Confucianism about the afterlife. So a lot of people take Confucianism and it's a belief system. So we believe in it. We, we follow it as a code, but we also need to, uh, pray or to worship those who died. So they have this ancestor veneration where you worship those who, uh, are your elders. Filial piety might have been a term you learned about last year where you have respect for your ancestors. And for example, this Chinese man right here has pictures of those who have passed away in his life and he is kind of praying to them or, or honoring them. Also in Confucianism, one of the big pieces is uh, the patriarchal society. And women are seen as uh, much lower than men. And it's ingrained in society. It's going to be worse as time goes on. But when she is young, she obeys her father. When she is married, she obeys her husband. When she is widowed, she obeys her son. So a woman's job is always to obey the male in her life, even if it ends up being her son. And all women are supposed to have morality, proper speech, modest appearance, diligent work. Good examples of how this is patriarchal. Also, uh, we see Taoism, which is going to compete with Confucianism. Uh, the Tao is the way. And if you know the way, you know the Tao. And if you don't know the Tao, you don't know the way. Think about that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are surf, if you like to surf and you are out in the ocean, it's just you and the waves. That is Tao. That's the Tao right there. You feel that connection with nature. If you're in a park somewhere and the birds are chirping and you lay down and you look up the clouds, that's Tao. And in all things in Taoism, there's a balance. So it's all about the yin and the yang, the male and the female. Um, no one is better than the other. Everything is, is in harmony and balance. The one thing that Taoists don't like is a political structure, strong political structure, which is going to go exactly against Confucianism. So there's going to be a little issue between these two. And these two, uh, along with Buddhism, are really, we're going to see a lot of competition in China um, between these three systems. And there's also a system called legalism. So there's all kinds of stuff going on in China of uh, which, which belief system is going to really emerge. Another belief is Christianity. It's going to be started as a reform movement by a guy named Jesus, who is from an area called Nazareth, which is down in this region right here. He's Jewish. Uh, he's trying to reform uh, Judaism, and he lives uh, right around born, right around the time of one, two. Some people, most historians think around three, uh, and he's going to live roughly thirty-three years. And he, the, his followers believe that he is divine, and he comes back. He's God's son, and he comes back to uh, spread the good news and to basically bring to fruition what was promised in the Old Testament or in the Torah.
The important thing about Christianity is this is going to spread throughout the Roman Empire. And missionaries and merchants are going to spread this, just like missionaries and merchants spread it, spread Buddhism. You need roads, you need trade routes, and this is what's going to be allow Christianity to spread, along with this guy right here who is Constantine, who is one of who was the first emperor to actually stop the persecution of Christians who had been persecuted for over 300 years, and also to um, convert himself, which is going to lead to other people converting. We also have Greco-Roman philosophy and science, so people are going to actually, um, in Greece and Rome, are going to focus on human nature, less so than religious beliefs, or at least these philosophers are. Uh, things are going to be based on empirical observation. What do you see? Not what do you think the gods want, but what do we see here on Earth? How are people? What? Why does this piece of Why is this piece of paper the way it is? What do I see? What do I feel? Is it really here? Is this real? And people are going to question those things. And this philosophy is all about questioning what you think you know. We got thinkers like Socrates, Aristotle, and Plato. And in a lot of these places, the religious and belief systems are going to be reflected in art. So for example, in Greek art, where we're looking at human perfection, you're going to see that in the artwork. Um, some are going to some of these belief systems are going to reinforce social structures. So we have the we have caste system like we talked about, women's roles. That's patriarchal. We've always seen that. Others are going to kind of go against it. So Christianity and Buddhism give more rights to women. Women are equal in salvation. They have the ability to be monks. And then also we have other religious traditions that are going to continue. We still see shamanism and animism and this ancestor veneration where we worship the gods of uh, the Mother Earth and Father Sky. With that, that's my wrap up. Um, a lot of information here, so feel free to rewind it, watch it again, come to question, come to class with questions, and I'll help you out. Next time, we'll talk about uh, the classical civilizations and how these religions used, or how these classical civilizations use this stuff and these belief systems that we talked about, and then eventually how they trade it. That's what I got. Have a good day. Enjoy.